Greater Accra Mass National ID card registration hit with logistical challenges. And the minority in parliament suspects executive manipulation in the recall of parliament. A business meeting to commence negotiations for job retention regarding Tema Port expansion deal ended inconclusively. And on the foreign front, New Zealand police says it's responding to an incident at Christchurch. We'll start from the offices of the Electoral Commission. Now, barely a year into her office as chairperson of the Commission, Jean Mensah has undertaken a major shake-up at the Commission. With the country... Metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives, both to be held in the last quarter of 2019. That will be a year away from the general elections set for December 2020. The reshuffle, according to some political watchers, came to them as a surprise. Key amongst the shake-up is Eric Kofi Japasu, who was the Director of Communications of the EC. He has been moved to the Volta region to be the Deputy Director. A Deputy Communications Director, Yusuf Alhassan Ayuba, has also been reassigned to the post of a District Officer. And the Director of Finance, Joseph Kwekua Samoa, has also been moved from the headquarters to the Ashanti region. Speaking to the media moments after meeting the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, Chairperson of the Commission, Jean Mensah, said it is in line with the Commission's regulations. I think the EC reserves the right to do you know, transfers of its officers as it deems fit. And if you, uh, if you look at the whole, you know, the, this whole um, transfers and assignments and promotions, it's, it's not really a shake-up. We've had reason to appoint you know people to the position of acting directors and acting deputy directors pending you know interviews by the commission and the public services commission and so on so there are some movements here and there we've come in it's been almost eight months and we've been on the ground we've assessed the situation and i think what we are doing is in the best interest of the commission you are finding and making sure that you you put you know, round pegs in round holes and square pegs in square holes to ensure that efficiency. Now, the chairperson of the commission, Jean Mensah, says temporary staff who participated in the 2018 referendum would be paid by next week. She confirmed this at the Public Accounts Committee sittings in Parliament. Temporary staff of the Electoral Commission who helped in the conduct of the 2018 referendum on creation of new regions have still not been paid. The commission said most of them have no traditional bank accounts and mobile money accounts and therefore would be paid by cash. It permit us this time to pay them, you know, cash because it's also taking a very long time. And in actual fact, it is not we going to permit you, but the situation is such that you cannot avoid it. Okay, thank you. You cannot. So we, we would have to pay them because of the. So you have to revise your earlier position that you are going to pay, uh, you know, pay by cash. Meanwhile, electoral commission officers are to be surcharged for failing to withhold tax on rent. The commission chair admitted to this omission. Management should recover the amount not withheld from the landlords as required by the act. Have those amounts been uh, recovered from the landlords? Honorable member, to the best of my knowledge, and with, after discussions with our team, the monies were not recovered from the landlords. The monies were not recovered? Yes. Wow. The commission tried, but the landlords did not produce them. They didn't have the money. And it's, uh, it's, our, it's, our, it's a fault of the commission, in, in, in our view. Madam, uh, this, is a, this is just an excuse. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I recommend that the commission should be surcharged for that amount. 
Now, the chairperson has, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jane Mentor, has denied any confrontation ever happened between her and the General Secretary of the main opposition, NDC, Johnson Etiedun Kitia, at a recent IPAC meeting. The NDC General Secretary accused the EC chair of disrespecting him, but speaking to journalist Jean Mensah denied this ever happened. But I want to find out uh, whether the commission went to parliament to seek appropriation for the refurbishment of the uh, biometric kits. And was that appropriation approved? Both in 2018 and in the current year. And if it was approved, on what basis did the commission justify that appropriation? Only to turn around to say that uh, spending that money on the equipment will be a uh, waste of resources. Sure the commission owes this response to the political parties. I think the commission has been dealing with parliament and we've gone in there to explain our budget and we've explained to them the decisions we have taken, why we believe that the initial you know, presentation made has been varied, and I believe that Parliament has accepted it. I'm not sure that we owe this response to the political parties. What I think that we want to make clear is that when the Commission you know, took office, there was a proposal before the Commission to refurbish the existing biometric system. And by refurbishing, I mean by to refurbish the existing kits that we have and the current data center. We all agree that the current technology only captures the fingerprints and it has not been helpful to eliminate the on our way from the east, let's head over to Parliament, where the minority leader of the House, Haruna Idrisu, has expressed concern over how Parliament is being uh, manipulated by the executive, alleging the presidency has a hand in the emergency recall of the House. He spoke on the floor of Parliament during the first day of the emergency sitting. It appears a decision by the Speaker to recall parliamentarians for an emergency sitting did not go down with some of them. Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu expressed his disapproval, but Majority Leader Oseche Mensah Bonsu thinks 90% of parliamentary business is made up of government business. I cannot question your authority, but if I were to quote you, on that beautiful day, your recall was premised on vigilantism bill on 29th. That was your, your, your definite directive. Today, we will do business for government, but government must know that this house is not an extension of the executive. We don't recall parliament on any matter that does not have to do with public business. So, Mr. Speaker, when it becomes appropriately necessary, the parliament will be recalled. Parliament will be recalled. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, in my own closing remarks, the day of adjournment are related not only to the vigilantism. I said to us that there are other matters in the pipeline that we may have to deal with. As you speak now, Speaker, there are two very important agreements which have very serious um, repercussions for the economy. The House was recalled to consider urgent bills, including the company's bill 2018 the Sino-Hydro related tax exemptions and waivers payment agreement between Ghana acting through the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation GNPC and Gemcom Commodities Trading SE for an amount of 220 million US dollars among others. The House will rise on May 3 and resume on May 28. Now, 28 centers instead of 45 were operational for the first day of the Ghana Card National Mass Registration Exercise in the Wajagba municipality of the Greater Accra region due to logistical challenges. Meanwhile, late setup and low publicity also characterized the registration exercise at the four centers we visited. Wendy Lai reports. 
We arrived at the EP Tech Tetego Center at 10.20 a.m. Four persons were registered awaiting their cards. I heard uh, the process would start at 7 o'clock. So apparently I got here at 6.30 as early as possible. And the officers were also here on time to do whatever setup they were supposed to do. So I went through the process. I started with the registration. They asked me whatever information I needed. Uh, they needed to fill the forms. So, but it took a little bit of time. I think uh, the officers are inexperienced, but I know with time they will get through the process very well. It took me about 30 minutes for the registration process, and then I went to take uh, my picture. The registration process is expected to last for about 15 minutes. Officials who spoke of camera explained the process started around 7 a.m. The team observed some applicants had come to the centers without their digital address, and subtext savvy ones assisted. The registration should have been done in front of their residences, but in the haste to get registered, most of the digital addresses were created at the center. Other primary requirements needed for the exercise are a valid passport or birth certificate, either of which qualifies one to register. There is a commissioner of oath at each registration center to take those without any of the above documents through a vouching process. As at 11, 11 a.m., there were about 64 applicants at the center. Some residents misunderstood the whole process. <laughs> This NI official at some point had to explain the essence of the mandatory and primary requirements for the exercise. <laughs> It's only yesterday night I heard that something like this is going on. No education, nothing. So when I came, they said they need this, 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 this. Also, my passport is expired. But my belt, I don't know where I replace it. They say no, uh, no head, no this. Oh, if I didn't get, I just forgot about it. Our next stop was the ICGC Old Tetegu Center by 11.54 they had registered five applicants. Setup delays, according to the NIA officials, was a major setback as they also waited for supplies from the district registration officer. An applicant who spoke off camera said he arrived at the center at 4 a.m. Unlike the Tetegu EP Church Registration Center, we noticed there were Ghana Post officials who had helped with the generation of digital addresses. Vida, an applicant, told me she had to take this Ghana Post official home to obtain her GPS address. At the Obloko Presby Center, applicants also waited for their cards. A final stop was at the Oblogo ITS Center. Here, officials told us they had to set up late. They had been able to issue 10 cards as at 1.27 p.m. Applicants there who also spoke off camera complained about the delays. Now, reacting to this issue, the Way Jaguar Municipal Chief Executive, Patrick Kwesi Brakon, says the Assembly's information van was used for the sensitization exercise a day before the registration. He was of the view that concerns raised by residents on the low publicity were expected and are valid. Well, you're still watching Morning News on New Day. Now, the Chief Steward of Workers of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Emmanuel Ahin Young, has called for the resignation of Transport Minister Kweku Ofori Esiyama. He told TV3 Vive phone that the minister has failed to pay heed to their demands and to work in the interests of the country. Emmanuel Ahin called on President Kufuado to terminate the appointment of the transport minister with immediate effect. According to him, unionized workers will continue to protest against government for not showing dissatisfaction over the MP's contract.
Committee the Management of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and Meridian Port Services to commence negotiations for job retention regarding the Tema Port expansion deal has ended inconclusively. Both parties call for more time to compile needed documents to advance the discussion. The meeting followed a directive issued by the Minister of Transport for management to iron out issues with the developer on how jobs could be retained. Government has been challenged to make definite pronouncement on the concession agreement. But the meeting ended inconclusively as both parties say they are still gathering enough information. Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, GPHA, Michael Luguji, who was part of the meeting, gave an assurance that plans are underway to put clarity on the way forward for workers. The Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority workers under the Maritime Dock Workers Union started a one-week protest, which is billed to continue until the issue is well resolved. The union leaders hit the principal streets within the port enclave. <laughs> Granting the concession to the Meridian Port Services NPS to develop and operate a new port for 35 years has generated some controversies within the maritime sector. The union is calling for a total review of key clauses that exempt the company from paying dividends to the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority in the first 10 years of operations. Well, this is some international news now. New Zealand police said on Tuesday they were responding to an incident in Christchurch where 50 people were killed in attacks by a lone gunman on two in two marks in March and asked people to avoid the area. Police declined to comment on the nature of the incident in Phillipstown area of the city of New Zealand's South Island and gave no further details. Broadcaster News have said cordons were in place and an ambulance was in the area. Well, there's more news on our website, www.3news.com. You will return shortly after this break. We'll, we'll find out it comes. Yeah, we'll tomorrow will come. be. From one set of a holiday to yeah. another. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good morning. It's Tuesday. Trust yeah. you're fine. Yeah, yes. we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> we can't complain. Fantastic Tuesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a lot of uh, excitement. The month has ended. I'm sure yeah. people are looking up to what we expect in, in May. Next, no. And so uh, there is some kind of mixed. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, that people are happy but don't know what's happening mm. in May. But don't forget, as for, for parents, um, it's, uh, it's getting, <laughs> it's getting a bit yeah, tough now okay. because mm. you know, the, the kids are going to school. Yeah, after <laughs> the Easter know. break. I don't know, but sometimes I need to talk about this, but the, the kids are going to school. Yeah, so they're, they're going back yeah, to school. They're going back you to see, school. while well, well, some parents are excited that the, the kids will leave home so Great. they can have time. Great. Yeah. Are the financial. Not so yeah. happy yeah. The financial yeah. Part is not Johnny, let me tell you, all of them at some point will not be happy because of the financial part. No. But having them leave home so, so that you can have your peace of mind, that every parent a, is I'm happier. A, but I saw pictures of some parents, you know, pouring needle all over themselves. <laughs> and they're like, can the teachers just please, please okay, come for these children? children? And I'm like, but they're yours. Why should the teachers have to bear this grant? We're happy. Uh, yes, you, you, you'll be. But they're home. Charlie, <laughs> the electricity meter runs. Everything is right. Oh, now you're lucky. At least we don't have, you know, the land phones that we used to have in the past where you'd oh be tapping God. and all that. Oh so now you buy credits for them and then you pray that they'll manage it until, you know, their holidays but are over. You get home and everything is all. <laughs> You know that the, the fridge is open. Everything. <laughs> I mean, they don't have a care in the, the world. The other oh, God. was telling me, a friend of mine was telling me that, oh, he used to buy two loaves of bread and just like things. A portion, just, yeah. Uh, I see. And so when they go to school, they go and eat at school. Right. Mm. So he pays feeding fee. Right. He says ever since they vacated, he buys. <laughs> the bread, he has to multiply. You know, multiply them. And, oh, and God. They're, they're, if he quantifies the amount of money he pays for them to feed at school mm. compared to what he <laughs> <laughs> he wants them to go the to 
school feeding program is working immediately. <laughs> but today is Kawawa's Thursday. One Kawawa, Adi Yawfosula, be great, great, great ace journalist here. We're celebrating him today. God bless you. We all love you. Coming from myself, Johnny Bright, the whole team. Mm. You know, everybody is rooting for you because okay. Charlie, you had a guy. <laughs> okay. And I hear Juliana York's birthday as well. Okay. Happy, happy. And all birthday. of you, I think the Wasi students were writing their exams. Mm. Uh, all of you writing your exams. Uh, good morning. Mm. And Aziz Donla, you also writing oh. from UDS in Wa. Nice. Uh, you also Don't write. Like yes, you yeah. also writing your exams. Good morning. And then happy birthday to Veronica Lee Smith, uh, nursing at Midway Free Training College at Formina. That's where you are. And then Delay is in Cape Coast. He's watching us. How are the bees doing this morning? Ah. Oh, they are great. The bees that I, don't stink. I, I, yes. I was <laughs> awed by the bees that they, they, they don't stink. <laughs> they don't stink. I'm still, I mean, we I have to go and try it. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't <laughs> they, seen it. They only produce animals mm. and propolis. I wouldn't have believed it. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. And I think we have to exp you know, explore yeah, yeah, more I think what it's they a, can It's a fantastic job they're doing there. It is. Is, that, is that the only location where yes. they do that? Yes, you need to actually gather them. Okay. They are in the wild, so you need to bring oh. them to a location where they can... They can I'm just them. interested in finding out how the first how person identify identified yeah, that, that these ones was. don't sting. So, so Prof Kwapon was in Brazil and, okay. and saw the beads and came to Ghana. Okay. And he's a bee specialist, so right. okay. he got interested, actually went out searching for Those these kinds, ah, kinds okay. of bees. Okay. They live in tree cavity, nice. tree trunks. Okay. So, so when he, he identified that, he cuts the tree, okay. locks them up there okay. and then brings them to his center. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. he, he said he's come the whole Ghana uh, get, taking Trying these days to, to uh, Cape Coast. There, so. I see. Oh. Fantastic wow. job. But, but now they are, they are multiplying. They are, multiplying. No, they are doing family they, planning. They do a lot. No, they, I they, they, they do they a lot of family planning. <laughs> so they're, they're growing. Uh, Prof, good morning. I'm sure by the time we come, a, a number of them will. And, 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 and they're producing honey, they're producing uh, medicine that he says is scientifically mm. proven. Mm. It's okay. called propolis. He said it is, mm. it is used in treating cancer and other. Uh, I see. Diseases. So Amazing. Well, we, we yes, Amazing. Let me say a good that. morning, special one to you, Mrs. Geraldine Quay of the Ghana Post and the uh, rest of the family out there. Good morning to you. Okay. And uh, belated happy birthday to you, Dr. Kobi Mensa mm. of the University of Ghana Business School. Yesterday was your birthday. It's your birthday as well. Happy birthday to mm. you. We love you. We so, love Ghana you. Post and the address. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I am okay. The Ghana Post GPS. Uh, and, yeah, the GPS. A lot of uh, people yesterday talking about the fact that they don't have GPS. I am not getting it. What is really the, the issue? Well, is it that they don't have it or they don't know how to generate it? Well, I right, think it's we, both. we can it's both. That, yeah. But we can <laughs> both be here mm. and somebody can stand where Amando is and we can get different addresses, even though we live in the same place. I have had occasion where somebody stood in front of my gate, mm. generated it, and then shifted about two steps to the right, generated it, and it changed. A different yeah, address. Exactly. Change. But you, a house is supposed to be big. So, uh, okay, so it, if, if I, I go say, I mean, the <laughs> best one to get will be right in front of the gate. Of course, where right in front is, is a bit, you know, uh, scientific. When, when there's no gate? Even if there's a gate, John, even if, if there's a gate, depending on the mm. size, you know, and these mm. things are dealing with coordinates. So if you move even just, a, a, you know, a step to your right or right. a step to your left, I think it's bound to change. And that's where I have an issue with how this Ghana Post <clears> thing is even being generated. Because I would have thought if we're going to use it for such a big, you know, pro project, Mm. then the government should have taken strides to make sure they're generating it for everybody right. so that you can be sure that for this particular house A, this is it, it's fixed. Mm. You can't have mm. maybe, because if we're about four people living in that house and all four of us are getting different posts, then really, at the end of the day, what yeah, are we it's doing? Confusing. It's confusing. And Don't so be, I, 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 they need to okay. come back I, I and I think, you know, I clarify that, uh, for Yes, us. Pam Dirty and his team will need to, uh, mm. uh, like you said, clarify because I am confused as to what the address is. Is okay. the address they're talking about, the one written in front of your, your gate, your gate. Or door or your wall, is that the address? Or, or something else that you generate on your yeah, phone. Because I've seen people who go to the centers to go and register. They have the address on their wall, their gate, and then they are being told that that is not the address. Right. Mm. So I don't mm. really know what's, yeah, what's the issue. So a bit of clarity will do. Yeah, it will help. Well, well uh, help. so the NIA says that this because morning... Because they're they, requirement mm, for that. For NIA said they've released some NAPCO uh, guys into town <laughs> to help some people generate the address. So I'm sure by the close of the day, because we'll, we'll get to know what exactly... The address so the so what is the reach and spread of these NADMO guys who have been put out there to go NAPCO, and help? NAPCO. 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 Right. Don't Sorry. give NADMO more. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> NAPCO yeah. guys who have been put out there. What's yeah. the reach and spread? Well, we're we here to be told, we but at least we're told that they are in town this morning trying to uh, 
uh, help people who do not have the addresses. I, I really hope they are well identified because yeah. there could be some unscrupulous people who mm. could join them Welcome and do what it is. But, but yesterday I had a call from, mm. from someone uh, who lives in Tema okay. and she says that she's used the Tema motorway. I mean, she uses it very often because mm. she comes to this part of town mm. to go back. There's a, a certain vendor on the seat booth towards where the, the new boots are being created, okay. mm. the electronic, okay. the last one. Mm. Right. And each time she pays the toll, the guy doesn't give him uh, a ticket. Mm. The guy says he has a fault <laughs> each time. Permanently. So Yes. So now you can imagine okay. how many cars have gone through it, and then the guy has it's told them fault. he doesn't have <laughs> a I see. fault. So for every one CD yeah. or 50 persons that's paid, they take, he takes it, he doesn't drop the, the, the receipt for you. He takes it, doesn't drop the receipt for you. And that's not good. That's you not know, good. nobody is watching because you are in a hurry to drive well, and go. I would expect that if it's faulty, then he doesn't even, you know, take the toll at all because it has yeah, to be accounted for. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah. booth yeah. should be closed and everyone else but uses he's the other taking, one. But he's no, taking so the money. Stop. Because so if I got there and you told me I can't have a receipt for it, technically, I'll either we'll move, I, will, we'll, I mean, we'll have a deadlock because I'll be standing there waiting. Uh, even if it means you have to write something that is stumped or right, approved, right, you have to give someone right, a receipt right. for what they're paying for. Already, the one we are even getting a receipt for, we are not seeing what we are doing. So, uh, the managers of the toll booth on the Tamamoto Way, please check. Uh, we have had a series of reports. That I had two yesterday um, that, well, one of the operators in, in the booth towards where the new ones are being constructed from Accra to Tema has actually been telling people that his machine is faulty and uh, he takes the money, he doesn't give them receipts. So, literally, the nation is being raped, I want to believe. No, but uh, yeah, Johnny, I, I, I think that, that. They, those mm. who are using that particular mm. uh, uh, one, mm. I think, like Amma said, I mean, I think they should refuse to pay. They should yeah. refuse yeah. to pay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if there's no, because uh, how do we trust that whoever is taking the money is going to account exactly. for it? Right. If it is not working, either you you come back and use another uh, okay. place or oh, please but, i mean um, the, the authorities should close yeah, it off yeah, that yeah, would be the safer true, thing to do yeah. but guys talking but, about but the but kidnapping so, so so then what happens to all them because it, the daily sales mm. that he has made which is not accounted no, for. No, that one is gone. Again, what happened? Yes, yeah. but he must no, pay. No, but he must pay. No, he must pay. And if he doesn't, then the supervisor of that no, particular toll booth pay. must pay. Uh -huh. Someone no, has to reimburse it. The toll, the toll booth is there for a purpose. But how do you check how much is made? Well, he should declare. Or we will price. declare for him. <laughs> <laughs> that one, it is... It's either you under-declare or over-declare, but he should declare <laughs> something. Under-declare, over-declare, or we'll declare for you. But again, um, journalists being uh, bribed uh, mm. not to publish stories. Um, uh, John, I'm am, I am worried about it mm. because um, it is it is worrying. I don't know, but I think it's an issue that we'll, in, in the course of the show, <sighs> talk about it. But it, it is indeed a worrying s situation. Well, I mean, the, the consequence of it is that Mr. Bukhari has resigned from his position. But mm. the question is, is that enough? Okay. Um, did he agree that he tried to bribe the journalist? Um, when we all know that bribery is indeed a crime mm -hmm. in this country where both the giver and the receiver are guilty. Mm -hmm. In this case, a journalist claims he didn't receive the bribe, so he blew the alarm right. or he, he blew the whistle. Yeah, he actually took the money and the motorbike to the BNI. Right. right. Yeah. So uh, as, as evidence, mm -hmm. he wanted to say, get the but, but then what would warrant, and Mr. Bukhari says he was trying to solve the problem mm -hmm. or make peace, mm -hmm. what would warrant that kind of arrangement, especially from a regional minister, mm -hmm. What is, yes, what is so dire that he would want to part company with 5,000 cities, a motorbike, just to make peace? What kind of peace is that? Is mm. it the same one that the National Peace Council has <laughs> been championing? Or this is a different kind of well, peace that is not well peace. defined, which we do not know? Mm, yeah. So okay. there may be undertones. And mm. I really wish that we don't just allow this to fly away it, yeah. and go. Mm. We will have to deal with the matter as Head it is on. so yeah. that it becomes a deterrent to, to others, others within the vicinity I who may want to follow in that same example. What kind okay. of peace are we talking about? Okay. But because that that, because that bond has journalists peace. Are not for, I mean, journalists are not for sale. This is not the first time we've heard this. Yeah. Th this is probably one of the stories that has come out with politicians and the fact that there's money, you know, involved. But we've heard other ones under tones mm. where people are, you know, threatening to take, mm. tell you to take a story off and all that. But that is what the media is here to do, to put mm. out the information out there. And I mean, if it's there, why look, would you want look, to cover? 
the person is I've, doing I've always said, it's I've always said, and I'll say this directly to Mr. Alfilmoni <coughs> and the rest of the team, that look, <coughs> get a proper salary structure for journalists. <laughs> get a proper salary structure for journalists. And journalists will not have to be in the pockets of people or be tied to the apron strings of others. If you... Uh, graduate from the GIJ with a degree and you get into the police uh, officers training school, you become an ASP. If you join the military, you become a second lieutenant or a lieutenant. Mm. So it's there. Child. Now, if you, if you graduate from the GIJ with your degree and you get into any newsroom, what are your prospects? What do you rise up okay. to become? So get a proper salary structure for them because the first law of nature is survival. If the person is hungry, we're lucky this man didn't take the money. But if the person is hungry, he will take way. it. Would, mm. you, would, would you have taken it? Well, I mean, I'm not hungry. <laughs> Thank God for that. Anyway, I'm happy to be employed, <laughs> gainfully. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, look, let me tell all those who are, who are trying to get passports. Look, don't, don't pay any money again. I mean, yeah. if, if you didn't know from today, I mean, don't pay any money to anybody to... Don't pay to get your passport, boy. I tell you. Yeah. Look, yesterday I was at the, uh, the Ghana uh, passport? passport Premium Center, mm. the one at right. the, the digital. It's, yeah. it's, it's smooth. It's fantastic. Smooth. Look, I spent, let's say, 15 minutes, okay. and we you had taken done. the photograph, and we, we, we had to leave. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and you get your coffee fantastic. up front. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You get your co fantastic. coffee up front. Do not pay Hot even coffee. 50 pesos to anybody to do a passport <laughs> for you. I yeah. tell you, yeah. it's, it's a waste of it's, money. It's, it's fraud, it's actually. Money. Don't anyway, pay guys. them money. Don't do that. Go to the state. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just go on the online portal. Yeah. Do it. Connect. Pay your money. Go and pick That's up your passport and go away. Fantastic. On that note, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more on your favorite morning show, New Day. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you very much. We're ranting. We'll go to Takrade. There's mm. three kidnapped girls. Uh, the matter is ongoing. This is about day 27 after the police CID told us, the whole nation, that they know where the ladies are. Well, up until now, they have not been reunited with their families. But we do understand that the kidnapper has been jailed 18 months for escaping jail or breaking out of jail, but right. not because... He kidnapped, he's kidnapped uh, or they suspect him to kidnap a guy. I mean, I don't know what you think. Um. But I think putting it in context, apart from these tardy girls who obviously have gained traction because I think the numbers, mm. there's been a lot of, you know, the increasing spate of kidnapping issues mm. in Ghana. And I'm wondering where this is coming from. Yesterday, the president was talking about it. And like he said, this is something we used to hear of in Nigeria. Mm. And it became a norm. And it seems to have, you know, trickled down to Ghana. Mm. I'm wondering and the education to young people to try and identify who a kidnapper looks mm. like, what mm. they do, or how they go mm. about the activities. Because there's a story I saw on a post, and it was a very subtle one of a young girl, <coughs> you know, being nudged into a car, and mm. then she was pushed. This happened around Circle. They walked through some stores and all that, only to go and find other people there. And she escaped because she says she was in her period, and so right. they let her go. And so this thing is real, and it's I think real. we need to advise people and talk about it more. But anyway, yeah. let's go out there to Tadi and talk about the suspected Takradi girls whose kidnapper has been jailed. And let's find out what your take is. It appears to be settling on the kidnap case involving Nigerian Samuawos. Samuawos is accused of kidnapping some three girls here in the Sekendi Takradi metropolis. This morning when the market circle court sat on the case, it sentenced Samuawos to 18 months on two of the three counts that he was charged on. One was escaping lawful custody, another resisting arrest, and the last one was causing damage to a state institution. But residents on hearing the sentence are not too pleased. This morning on daily runs, we are trying to capture some of the scenes here at the Takrade Market Circle Court. My name is Eric Ewoje, and this is the daily rant. Yeah, 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 man, it's a crime. I know I'm doing a 
Lagos. Why Lagos? Why can't you Lagos to Why won't you? In your Adishi, you are young. Adishi, you are young. You are strong, Jim. Maybe be a long run. We are from here. We are from Umbra. We are Umbra. We are from Umudi. We are from Umagro. 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 Now you to make Nigeria, you need a madam. Or then Nigeria for one hand, you just suck one in Allah. I want one more Vienna, a Ukraine, a Bagana, a day. I didn't see a day. From an hour before I'm black. Now, but I want their form. I want their form. Nine months on your is a on your is a what's the police for now? Hey, Melacasa, police for one who nipper every or the other one. I show no every other not police for a judge one dog. Because I come there. I come there. Yeah, man. 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 Yeah, Nigeria, we Mammy Free Lusu, since I'm a famous sister, be a small business. All of them on Tadi, no, what's wrong? Your small for me, I want for Tadi, what better one? Not this, I'm a wet senior, where Janima, okay. Tire MP, and I say Gan and Penfuni be back, and that's as a good tuna. I can get on by a found. Memaco, uh, Air Force, our Beach Road, Garrison. And that may almost be from the country, I'm a private care be found, Miss Uncle Coco Suomo, our school wolf. Memana and Fokan, and see, I don't have a man of Fokan, a Bianca like Sabri, and can be numa somewhere about to me. And the person got a gun and pen for answer, almost so on Manasse. No more, I don't buy a found clay. If the young Yan, if you are now out to Munia, me papa, me mammy, if it's not to one arm, and the gun and pen for one form, no more for Muhu, a crown by Fasso and Clano, or Mutuan Babylon family. So come on, Cotidia, go off for the kind of formal and into a form of formal number. Uh, since our assembly scene, me, I've been following the uh, courts. Then the, I'm the judge, you know, in his own wisdom, one man, uh, 18 months for breaking of the ceremony. Yes, but my mama saying that since all what we are waiting for is to bring the guys back. So I'm appealing to BNI, Ghana Police, and the National Security. These three institutions, three entities, they should come together and come out and tell us we Ghanaians where the girls are. If they are alive, they should bring them back safely. We are waiting for them. All what we are crying for, all Ghanaians are waiting for, is to bring the girls back. So please, I'm on my knees. IGP and his team, BNI and the National Security, where the girls are this week, come out and tell us. The girls that they are here, they are bringing them back. Ghanaians are going to celebrate. No, Biasi, I feel young with you. This will be a little baby post. It's a girl, son. One way, shake the mass, may shake the whole Ghana. If you from the presidency, presidency to the messenger, we're shaking. It's a mess. It's two shades to three. I'm going to go on, They should bring their girls. I'm not going to get it. When they go to Nigeria, it's so easy, even easy to own a shop, even like a lot of kiosk. But even more, why are you going to go to Nigeria? Don't worry, watch him. Police are bringing. Where's the policeman? But uh, here are the boss. Ask me where are the girls? I don't know where. I don't know where. Where are they? Now we're not bad. We're pumping. We're not doing pumping. For what? 
You cannot own a store, even a store, a kiosk, even a baby. Master, it's only easy to, to stay in Nigeria. He came looking all night. All hey, yo. night. It's a woman's journey. The person was in the same way. I'm a young guy. I'm a young guy. I'm a young guy. I'm a young guy. That is the level of anger here at the Takrade Market Circle Court after the judge passed his sentence on the kidnapping case involving Samawos. Mind you, the court says that the kidnapping case is not actually before it. What it treated was the case of escaping lawful custody, resisting arrest, and causing damage to state property. Now, the residents are not too happy with the sentence passed by the presiding judge. According to them, they were expecting a harsher punishment to serve as a deterrent to other Nigerian nationals who plan engaging in kidnapping. According to them, if it were to be a relative of somebody in high authority, this case would have been put to bed fast. What do you think? You can go onto our various social media platforms and post your comments there. My name is Eric Yeoje and this has been the Daily Rant from Takradi. Welcome back and uh, let's take a look at the newspapers this morning. Uh, we're dealing with kidnap cases president. Uh, minister resigns over leaked uh, tape. Uh, one a big issue we'll take a look at. The Ghanaian Times has the kidnapping story. We'll deal with uh, kidnappings, President assures. And the rocks in Bukhari resigns over leaked tape, uh, also carried by the uh, time. The finder this morning says, um, slow start, a photograph of the registration of uh, the mass uh, registration Ghana card here. Also, the NPP and DC agree on scope of dialogue on disbanding party uh, militias. That's, uh, that story is also on the uh, finder. Those are some of the newspapers I have with me this morning. Those who do the talking, member of parliament for the Futu uh, constituency, a member of the NPP, Honorable Alexander Finamaki is here. Good morning. Morning, sir. And hope you're doing great. Very well, I'm doing well. You'll be missing for a long time. Welcome back home. And then uh, the National Communication Officer of the NDC, Sami Jeffy, is also here. Sami, good morning to you. Hope morning. you're doing great. Bye, girls, mm. Thanks for uh, joining us. So we'll take a look at uh, some issues with the kidnappings. The president, once again, assured uh, we're dealing with it. Uh, Mr. Roxin Bukhari has also resigned. Uh, we'll take a look at that. But let's start on this. So yesterday, the University of Education, Widba, uh, um, over the weekend, sorry, held uh, its congregation and several issues uh, were uh, discussed there at the congregation. The speeches uh, showed that there's still some uh, uneasy calm at the place and uh, the Minister of State in charge of tertiary education is asking that the party should lend uh, fullest cooperation and support to build peace and reconciliation. Um, he says that the disaffection at the campus could re erode the gains that have been made. But which way do we go? How do we deal with this? Uh, let me quickly get uh, the member of parliament for food to, to uh, start this conversation. On about your marking, uh, where we are, what Professor Kusin Yanka said yesterday it is not new to the university. The president has said a similar thing at the investiture of Professor, uh, uh, the vice chancellor, Professor Afu, uh, Bruni. Now it's been reiterated. Is it that it is hitting on rocks and so a, a drastic action need to be taken? Or what do we do? Well, um, thank you. Um, I didn't want to be talking about UUW matters again um, for some good reasons. But um, mm, the ones you, since you brought you it missing up, and you are back, I, I need to get no you problem. to yes. But um, let me premise my my views on what Professor Yanka said mm. on the 26th of April 2019. And quote: The Ministry of Education can simply not be enthused about a never-ending crisis at UUW. We had hoped that the admonition by His Excellency the President, Nana Danko Akuvado at the investiture of VC Afubroni in September last year would have been heeded. He urged the VC and management to take steps to restore peace and reconcile the broken university. That peace of the country appeared to have triggered 
more muscle flexing by various factions on campus. Then again, quote, any sign of an emerging drama in Winneba of two vice chancellors in one university will of course be ominous and not acceptable. But I would expect the governing council of UUW to take steps to broker a resolution ahead of this bizarre possibility. Emphasis, bizarre possibility. I refer preferably to an out of court settlement. Con to conclude, quote again, he said, universities should be quintessential enclaves for social and ethnic integration rather than typical sites for the balkanization of ethnicities. Then um, Daily Graphic in its editorial of yesterday also said, quote, the Daily Graphic is not happy that there seems to be simmering disaffection at UEW that has the potential to erode most of the gains made by the university. There is still on easy calm, although school has reopened for academic work to resume. Daily Guide concludes, a Daily Graphic daily concludes, graphic. our universities must learn to handle their grievances before they escalate into strikes and shutdowns. The advice by the minister to the UEW is apt, and the parties must listen and act on it for the good of all. So adopting these views, mm. I would want to add that Father Fubroni must listen and listen well. Um, the bizarre possibility, as referred to by Professor Yanka, Professor Yanka. must be taken seriously. Of two vice chancellors. I'm saying, saying the bizarre possibility, mm. that phrase must be taken seriously by him. He must reflect. And um, if in the past people hadn't their heart and it led to certain consequences, he must learn from this. Um, I personally um, supported the cause for restructuring uh, right things being done way back 20. 13 as an MP, largely because he, Afu Broni, had led the crusade, felt mm. that things were not right. And I am clear in my mind that the very things that he himself hoped to have changed or was looking forward to be doing for the betterment of the university, I mean, uh, isn't what I'm seeing. It has deteriorated. When I was talking about it, the impression was created as though Afenio is interfering. So I stayed back. But today, everybody else is seeing mm. graphic is dedicating its editorial to what is happening there. And if they think that they can do things their own way, you see, half for the law, it is there. If you wouldn't listen, and perhaps you want a court to make an order, uh, maybe that's what they are waiting for. Let me run you through a few individuals. Somebody like uh, Dr. Fori Bequin, the question is, mm. what, 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 what did he do? What has he done? Those who were dismissed I mean, sacked uh, or demoted. Shine Agbevi, if you are saying that somebody has sent a WhatsApp, WhatsApp communicating court matters and you have, you have de 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 demoted him, what about you who, who brought documents that some irregularities were there in procurement and which, you are there? Which is also uh, against the rules of, of the Of course. So I, I think that if the opportunity for reconciliation is there, proceed. On the 15th of January, I was in court. I was at the Supreme Court. When the Supreme Court made a point that, look, reconcile, pay off those that, I mean, after all, you are an employer. If you think there were some issues and you've got, you know, taken somebody out of office, you kicked him out, please compensate. It was clear. And that was well communicated to them. So I don't see this muzzle flexing and all that, articles here and there, insulting people and all that if they still think that other people don't deserve to eat, if Father Fubroni thinks that other people don't deserve to feed their families, mm. their families are not supposed to go to school and they should sit at home, maybe sooner than later he may find himself uh, on, the, on the wrong side of the aisle. Mm -hmm. It's up to him. I'm grateful uh, for uh, that. But Sami, th this issue of reconciling the university, I the, there were calls for Professor Fuboni to, to quit or perhaps be removed. 
Where, where do we go? What is just and fair must be done. Um, right, uh, let me first of all say a very good morning to our cherished viewers mm. and um, indicate that I'll be very snappy on this issue. A right. member of parliament is here, he's shed uh, light on the matter. Mm. But what I can say is that as a political party, we are deeply worried about the developments, the unfortunate developments, which eventually culminated into the closure of the main campus of UUW to the detriment of students. And any objective assessment of the situation will tell you that we are seeing these challenges at UUW because of the continuous and excessive interference of the Akufuado government in academic freedoms. That is what is eroding the gains UUW has made over the years. That is what is distracting that key academic you know, institution from its core mandate of teaching, learning, communal development, and so on. We are very worried. We are here because once upon a time, for political motives, political purposes, people decided to hound the then vice chancellor out of office without any lawful justification and on the basis of some frivolous allegations which had been peddled against the man. And our brother here, the Honorable Member of Parliament, was very instrumental in that. You see, so you, 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 you cannot but make the point that he himself has been part of the problem because I have listened to him on other platforms where he's made the point that he was misled, more or less, by evidence presented to him by the current Vice Chancellor, Professor uh, Afubuni, who sought to you know, um, exploit the situation at the time to his favor. They got uh, Professor Mauto Avoke out for nothing, made frivolous allegations against him. You know, today, Iyoko has investigated the issues I'm told. He's been cleared. He's been vindicated. The facts are now, have now been laid bare that, indeed, he didn't engage in the shady, you know, corrupt deals that were leveled against him. And so we have victimized an innocent man for nothing. And in the process, we have undermined the academic program, the academic focus, and the academic freedoms of that important institution. Now, this person that our brother, uh, the Honorable Member of Parliament, Honorable Afenio Marken, helped to bring to office, is the one today destroying the school, according to him, sacking people on how, the basis of ethnicity, Ruling How like an emperor. The investing? It should it no, be a matter no, no, no. of. First of all, you the, need. The that, is what, that is why I started by saying that all. the only way you resolve such a matter is by doing what is just and fair. You understand? If people have been dismissed on the basis of ethnicity, on the basis of expressing dissent, mm -hmm. on the basis of criticizing a vice chancellor or expressing divergent opinion and all that, and they have been dismissed, that is not right. And that must be corrected. The people involved must be reinstated. You listen to some of the reasons that form the basis for the dismissal of some of these people, and you cringe. You wonder whether we are living in Somalia, or we are living in Syria, or whether the vice chancellor there is ruling as a, as a Bukasa, or as, a, as, a, or as an Idi Amin, and so on. And, and I think that he's had the effrontery and the temerity to do that, because he thought at a point that he had the back end of President Tegufuado, and Honorable Afanyo Marken, who manipulated the processes to get him into office. And today, well, it is good at least that he has had a change of mind. But it is my hope that if eventually this vice chancellor is gotten out, out of the way and the old vice chancellor reinstated, which I believe should happen, because once he was removed on the basis of lies and on the basis of you know clear injustice and all that, they, the right thing to do under the circumstances is for him to be reinstated. I hope that when that is done, this government, this government and key functionaries and members of that government, functionaries of the ruling New Patriotic Party, will respect the independence and the academic freedoms of UUW and all other public universities and depart from this inglorious path okay. of undermining academic freedoms and, you know, uh, politicizing academic institutions, thereby 
you know, undermining their core functions and what these institutions are supposed okay. to focus on. I'm that is all I can say okay. about this. Right, let me, yeah. let me, yeah. let me a, a quick, quick one. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. a quick one. You yeah. see, it's unfortunate that um, my colleague would choose the path he has uh, taken. Um, so you see, that these are some of the things that uh, distort efforts at resolving matters. You see, immediately you start on that partisan attack. You lose the substance of the matters in issue. And I would have wished mm. that sometimes as politicians, when the issues come up and there's an opportunity to comment on, we take away this issue of and the NDC and the MPP and all that. My brother must at least be fair in tracing when I started the issue of UEW matters. I myself was a part-time lecturer there, and I know some of the injustices that occurred in times past. Now, for you to now attempt to talk about an Akufuadu government interference, then you are more or less trying to say that, oh, it is a partisan victimization of somebody. And that is most unfortunate. At what point must we intervene on the matter? Now, if you come and sit here and talk about the fact that, in all fairness, you use the phrase, I have manipulated the system. I mean, with the greatest respect, uh, the, the, the least you can say okay. is to say that at least... So the point is that I, you, you were not involved in whatever... No, I'm saying... Is that, please, is that the point? I'm saying that as a member of parliament there, my involvement on the issues regarding that university has been for the betterment of the university. Okay. And I have been candid and fair in my approach and consistent with matters thereof. It is not appropriate for anybody, it wouldn't be so, for you to come and say that somebody has manipulated or there is political interference. When you do that, when you do that, and I tell you, when you do that and others in your party begin to sing that along, then when anybody wants to deal with the matter, you are more or less boxing the person into a corner that it is partisan. And those who are perpetrating the injustice will now think that, oh, okay. after all, the thing has taken a partisan turn. For once, can we look at the issue okay. and be honest and discuss it? Than to think that okay. uh, it is partisan what attacking saying, government. What I mean, I mean, I'm surprised. Yeah, but I'm if not, that I'm is not, the way I'm you want to go, I'm not attacking honourable. If I that's the way you want to go, the fact that he has had a change of position on this matter. I've been consistent but, in my but, position, but, but, please. No, but, but please, then you didn't follow the story. For us to point out that he got it wrong with okay. regards to Professor Mawute Avoke, okay. and perhaps he was a main contributing factor. To where we have got into this. Ah, but okay. I was in court. So. Gentlemen, let's move on. I've always been in court. Let, let, let's move on. That your change in position is something we don't appreciate. It, let's, let's move on. Now, no, I don't need to are, change position. Uh, uh, gentlemen, no, I have, now, I have no, moved on. on. Right. Let, let's go to right. the president. Right. Let's go right. to the president. <laughs> right. Please. <laughs> please. Let, I don't. No, no, please. If let, we want to deal with an issue, let's let, we deal with it and close it properly. No, I am saying. I am saying. I am saying. It is not changing position. Mm -hmm. It's being consistent on what you think is right, fair, and just. Okay. That is my position. Subject okay. I am grateful. The uh, uh, Daily Guy this <laughs> morning says the minister resigns with a leak tape. Waste. Daily Graphic has a make story. Times them. has a story. The story says the minister of state at the presidency, uh, Roxen uh, uh, Yini Bukari, has resigned his post over an audio recording which went viral on social media. Now, uh, he's uh, immediate past minister for the Upper East region. Uh, sure, the story is well known. Uh, the tape between, the conversation between him and Edward Aditi, the journalist, uh, resulted in his resignation. We're told yesterday the president has accepted his resignation and wished him well uh, in his endeavors. That's the story. He was a, a former MC uh, during President Kufo's administration. That's uh, a story on the Daily Guide. Honorable Vinnie Markin, um, the minister resigning over a leak tip, um, big news? Well, you see, it's a matter of personal conviction. We are in a political enterprise. Mm. And when there are issues that, as a person, you think that 
it may disrupt the course of government business. Um, an allegation has been made. He says that, look, let me stay away from government. Let me resign. Uh, certain issues have been raised. And he has communicated the same to the president. That, look, I don't want to be that dark spot in your government mm -hmm. business. I want to be out of government. That in itself will give that opportunity for investigation in the matter. I don't know to what extent the, the journalist would want to go. Um, I don't know whether he's just thrown the tape out there or that he has made some uh, a report to the police. It, it depends on what they themselves uh, want to do or what the journalist would want to do about the tape. But for now, the fact that the man has taken a position, now look, this thing is out there. Um, whether uh, what is on the tape is exactly what transpired mm. or whether he actually intended doing what he had said on the tape or whether in an attempt at solving a problem uh, he, he, he acted in excess of what his mandate was. He today says that I want to step aside from government. He has graciously resigned. Mm. The next step is for the law enforcement, that is, if they, 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 they evaluate and would want to uh, proceed, then they would proceed from there. So I think that he is taking his principled uh, stand on the matter, mm. and he has left government. That, that, and the president has accepted his resignation. Mm. The, the issue is linked to a Chinese mining uh, company, uh, Shanxi Mining. Uh, does it not once again muddy this whole Ghana Chinese thing? How does it? I mean, what, he was, he what, was what, what is it? Intervening what, on behalf of a Chinese mining company. What is, what is it about a Ghana Chinese thing? I mean, the relationship between China mm. and Ghana is like all other bilateral relationships that we have with other countries. Mm. Currently, I mean, we have a program with the Chinese. I mean, uh, the NDC had a program with the Chinese, a relationship with the Chinese. Mm. We know about the CDB facility. Right. It took, I mean, to NDC time. It is not the first time the Chinese built the foreign ministry, I mean, for us. You have uh, Jubilee House, mm. um, the Indian government supporting, the American government, I mean, supporting, and so many other programs, the British government. I mean, we, we, we have relationships with countries across the group, okay? The German government, etc., etc. So it is not about this thing about the Chinese that you want to refer to. Currently, this Sino-Hydro si, si, thing. The sino -hydro thing. thing. Yes. It is an opportunity to grow our local industries in that sector. Instead of exporting raw bauxite, and you know, I've been one person who has advocated against this raw export, I mean, the, 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 the exportation of uh, the bauxite. Because if we don't add value, we gain nothing. Those guys there, I've worked there before, and I know what happens there. Mm. You know, they even bring their trucks in without paying taxes as though they have license to mine, uh, 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 license to haul. Meanwhile, they don't have license to haul. And they bring their own trucks. They send the bauxite out. They don't add value. They go and sell to their parent company. And we don't even exactly know how much they sell to their, their parent company. It's a serious matter. It's been there for many years. So if today there's a new arrangement, whereupon we're going to have local industries, Ghanaians will participate and would have value for money. The better it is. Mm. I don't see how that would give room for a Chinese to engage in illegalities and it would amount to government not taking action. Listen, uh, on the back on the on the backdrop of what the senior minister has said. You, you see, you see, um, right. Does it not show some kind of protection for these right. Chinese Right. You persons? see, sometimes in communication, the media can pick you out of context. Or sometimes in making a point, mm. 
it could be misconstrued. What did Osafu Mafu say? Did Osafu Mafu say that government did not want to prosecute the Aisha lady because of Sino Hydro? No, he never said that. He didn't say that. No, he never said that. Osafu Mafu was talking about, do you waste your time there on this prosecution rather than growing your economy or developing opportunities? Is he... Let us quote Ezali or play that tape. Mm. What did Osafu, how did Osafu Mafu link Asha to a Sino Hydro? So, so you're saying he didn't He mean was that. saying, he you're was saying, saying, saying he was he saying, that. listen, he was saying clearly, and you don't need any secondary interpretation. Osafu Mafu was saying that let us focus on relationships and focus on matters mm. that would put food on our table than to get into petty issues. Now, the person is engaged in an illegality. Mm. You go to court. You, he's jailed, or she's jailed, or that she's fined. She's still in the country. Don't you think it is better for the country to exercise a judgment that look, you, for what and what these and these things that you are doing, we, instead of wasting time on prosecution and all that, mm -hmm. we are deporting you. You think that it was a wrong decision to deport the, the woman? Well, I... In other jurisdictions, wait, in other jurisdictions, foreigners commit offenses mm. instead of perhaps the long period of prosecution and all that, the state could exercise a discretion, deport. So okay. are you saying that this is wrong to deport okay. the woman? Okay, I, I have not said that. I'm only asking you. So did uh, Osafu Mavu link, link the deportation? So, it's not, so it's not my suggestion, okay. right? It's exactly what Osafu Mavu said. said are that you, I'm referring to. Are you able to. to reconcile the deputy minister saying that Mr. Osafu Mavu's position isn't that of government and to you saying that what he said isn't what I am talking what about? What is his position? What is his position? That, and what that, is that, the position that, of government? That we, in, in the Sino agreement, there are back scenes and that the lady had to be deported because of some of these things. Now, Osafu Mafu, now let me, let me, let me, quickly, for, and let for, me the, for the avoidance of that. Osafu Mafu did not, and I challenge you, okay. play the tape again. Osafu okay. Mafu did not say that in the Sino-Hydro agreement, mm. there were behind the scenes matters he didn't say that. that had to be linked to Aisha's matter. He okay. never said it. And play okay. the tape again. Okay. Yeah, are you able to tell what he, he meant by behind it's it? It's not about, am I able to tell what he meant? Mm. It is about what it is. Okay. He's, he, what Osafu Mafu was basically saying that at the level of government, bilateral relationships, mm. you can exercise such an option. And that option of deporting the woman came to bear. Okay. Now, don't also forget that the Chinese authorities eh, openly said that it is not their nationals who can and engage in galamse. Okay. But no, we ourselves, our institutions, Let must be seen to be enforcing our laws against illegal mining. You heard the Chinese government saying I that. did. Sami, come in. Uh, we, we, we'll get uh, the tape to play. Uh, Sami? Okay. No, you can so, play it now. Uh, uh, yeah, please, they will, they will look for it. Sami, yes. Sami come in. Right. So uh, this is where we are. All, let me start. The minister has resigned. Roxin Bukhari's resignation. Mm. And uh, Bright, I would want to submit and submit very forcefully that the resignation of the minister is totally meaningless and useless until it leads to his prosecution and punishment and the prosecution of all other crooked members of the Akufuada government who have been found to have compromised our fight against Galamse and who have amassed wealth through corrupt practices under this galaxy fight because really what are we talking about we are talking about a minister of state do you want to rely on useless who, or you want to hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on allow him i said i think i said 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 Hold on, better. hold on, please. You see, what are we talking about? You we are talking about a, a minister of state mm. who has been caught on tape 
attempting to bribe a journalist in a frantic effort to kill a story that exposes the unethical conduct of a judge and the illegal mining operations of a Chinese mining company called Shanzi, who have been devastating our lands and forests in the Upper East region. That is what we are talking about. He is a lawyer, he knows. That what that minister was engaging on that tip is prescribed by Section 244 of the Criminal Offenses Act of Ghana, which makes bribery and corruption on the part of public officials a crime. And so the mere resignation of Roxim Bukhari is no sufficient remedy for his office. What we want to see is an immediate arrest and prosecution of Roxin Bukhari and his punishment, which will help us to achieve the needed deterrence, which will discourage other public officials from engaging in similar conduct. That is what we want to see. And that is why I made the point that this resignation will be useless. It means nothing until it leads to the eventual prosecution of that public officer and his punishment. In this people who are languishing in jail for two years, three years, five years for stealing cassava and plantain. And yet politicians engage in heinous crimes and get away with that. And so that is the first thing we want to see. Mm. But you see, Bright, in calling for the prosecution and punishment of Roxin Bukhari, we must also be fair because the law is no respecter of persons. The, there is nobody is above the law. Okay, how does Mr. Afenio Markin and the MPP reconcile the resignation of Roxin Bukhari with the fact that somebody like Mr. Charles Bissou still continues to stay in office, drawing salaries at the expense of the taxpayer and so on? Charles Bissou is also a public officer, a presidential staffer, who has been caught not I, on is audio, it a fact that he's but, drawing salaries? But, but of course, it's, he's still working as a presidential staffer, being paid. Okay. Of course. You see, who has been caught on video demanding and collecting huge sums of money from foreign nationals, compromising the fight against Galamse, actually facilitating and promoting Galamse by Chinese, caught on tape. How many months has it been? Has the present attention been drawn to that? Why is he still at office? Or is it a case of animal farm that some people are more human than others? Or is it because some come from, in quotes, resource deficient regions that some can be sacrificed and because others are considered as boys of President Akufo, they can continue to stay in office in the face of brazen impunity and corruption? So let us begin to see a consistent application of the law. And you see, I, wouldn't, I, I want to also submit that until we begin to prosecute some of these public officials who are aiding Galamse by foreign nationals and all that, this whole resignation will amount to nothing. Is that this issue does not change what the likes of the Minister of what the uh, Minister for Local Government, Honorable Haji Alima Mahama said some time ago, that MMDCs in the Akufuado government were engaged in Galamse, promoting Galamse and so on. It doesn't change the fact that currently as we speak, the member of parliament for Manson Kwanta. Professor Kwam, who is his colleague, MPP member of parliament, says that illegal Chinese miners are having a field day in his constituency, mining left, right, center, destroying water bodies and our forest cover in the area. It doesn't change the fact that, according to the CEO of the Forestry Commission, Sir John, there are certain higher ups in the Akufuado government who are undermining the fight, promoting Galamse by foreign nationals, Chinese, and so on. So we must begin to see government dealing decisively with these issues, prosecuting people, punishing people, before we can achieve that deterrence. And you see, it wouldn't also change the disgraceful and insulting comments of the senior minister, Honorable Yao Osafo Mafo, which my brother, senior at the bar, has sought to rationalize and justify on this platform. As I was sitting, I was, as I was listening to him, right, I was cringing in my, in my, in my seat. I said, what is Mr. Afenio Markin talking about? Did he listen to a different tape from what we've all listened to? If he wants a direct quotation from the tape, I will quote that for him. So read it. Listen, this is what Yawasa from Afo said in the tape. He says, we have a very, he was asked a question as to why Aisha was not prosecuted, but deported. 
And this was his answer. Yeah, no, we so have a very he, good he relationship. Said, he said, please. He was then, asked it, a question good, as no, no, to no, why are, Aisha was not prosecuted good, it's good, it's by the court. Yes, yes. And it's good so for let me quote him. So and I, it is for repeat viewers. The question. Repeat the question. The question you, was why Aisha Wine was, not, was prosecuted. not prosecuted and sanctioned, but, but was deported. Thank you. So, so let me read it. He says, we have a very good relationship with China. Yes. Today, the main company that is helping to develop the infrastructure system in Ghana is Sino Hydro, a Chinese company. Yes. With these kinds of arrangements, there are other things behind the scenes. Yes. He continued. He says, putting that lady, Aisha Wan, in jail in Ghana is not going to solve our economic problems. Thank you. It is not going to make you or me happy. Yes. That's not important. The question I would want to please, ask you please, 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 please. allow me to make please. my point, please. Uh, uh, you right. Right. Allow you. me to so make my point. You so, allow so you see the prosecution uh, uh, and jailing of the Nias make Afeno Martin happy. No, no, no. Spinning. Nobody's spinning. Spinning. Listen, listen. Uh, hold on, you hold on, allow hold on. Allow, allow me, please. Hey. Allow me, please. You were just talking about conduct at the bar. Sorry, you are bar. Agree. No, no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Listen, I was trying to straighten exactly. you. Oh, just no. trying to straighten no, you. We are rather These are allowed. To... These are permitted. Uh, hold, on. Just... hold on. Is it now? What's up for my phone? You were asked a direct question. You were asked a direct question. Why didn't you prosecute the woman? Why did you file a nolly prosecutor? Why did you discontinue that matter? This Aisha we are talking about is not any normal Galamse person. She was the queen of Galamse. And so on. The woman's, the, the, the mini, senior minister says, we have a very good relationship with China. The infrastructure developments we are currently embarking on port is even being done by a Chinese company, Sino Hydro. Mm -hmm. And with these transactions, certain things happen behind the scenes. What was he talking about? He proceeds to say that jailing Aisha Wan will not make anybody happy. It will not solve our problems. I want to ask Osafo Manfo, President Tekufuado, Afenyo Makin, and all other people who think like them, that would the prosecution and jailing of Guineans bring happiness to you? Would that make you happy? Would that solve our economic problems? Would the prosecution and jailing of Ofoswan Pofo solve our problems? Would that make you happy? Guineans are languishing in jail because of this Galamse fight. People have been shot, maimed, and killed because of this Galamse fight. Equipment have been bent and destroyed. The capital and investments of people have been destroyed in their own country. And yet foreign nationals can engage in brazen impunity, destroying our water bodies, environment. President Tekufuado and Afenyo Makin says it doesn't matter. What matters is Sino Hydro. What matters is money. Just like Esau in the Bible sold, you know, his, his, his position as the elder son of Jacob, uh, of, of Isaac, to his younger brother Jacob for food. They are ready to trade our laws, our environment, our resources, our water bodies. They don't care about the next generation all because of a so-called butter deal? And you are here justifying that? Listen, since Osafo Mafu spoke, government has not you know, seen the need to contradict him. You know that Osafo Mafu in the hierarchy uh, of the Akufuado government is actually the third most powerful person in government. At his vetting, he told us that he doesn't report to any other person but President Akufuado himself. He says he doesn't even report to the vice president of Ghana. And what he said was a disclosure of and a revelation of the inner thinking of the Akufuado government and what actually so formed the basis of that lowly prosecutor. If the deputy Listen, uh, minister says it is not the position of government, if would you your, also want to if say If your that grandfather tells you a story, will you go to your father to ask him whether that is true or not? The senior minister is talking. And the minister who was not even at the ministry at the time says, oh, he's not talking about government's position. You see, clearly, listen. The interpretation. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are making a mistake. The interpretation. The, the, the interpretation, interpretation being placed no, on it was what, what the deputy said. minister was saying. Uh, okay, is hold on, 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 Concluded. Maybe, Let, maybe we'll, if Afenyo Makin cares to know. We'll play the tape before. Hold on. So in you, Tanzania, you, you, you another Chinese woman called Yang Felan, I'm sure you are very, you know, apprised with that matter, was engaged in the poaching of elephant task in contravention of the laws of Tanzania. Mm. This woman had served as the vice chairman for the China-Tanzania Business Council for years. In fact, she relocated to Tanzania in the 1970s. 
in spite of that, in spite of Tanzania's relationship with China, and in spite of all the things which happened behind the scenes relative to Tanzania-China bilateral relations, the woman was prosecuted in Tanzania and convicted. Today, she's serving the prison term of 15 years. If we had done that to Aisha, we would have been able to achieve that deterrence so that tomorrow, if Chinese foreign nationals are coming to our country to engage in Galamse and all manner of crimes, destroying our environment and all that, mm. they will think twice. That is the golden opportunity we missed when we decided to let Aisha wine off the hook. And I think that you should be embarrassed by that. Let's Sitting on TV to justify but, that but, uh, no, by saying that, oh, uh, what Osafo Mafo said, there was nothing wrong with it. The man says, no, let's we, take let, some we allowed uh, Aisha wine off the hook mm. because... We have a good relationship with China. Sino Hydro is a Chinese company, and they are the ones currently embarking on all these infrastructure projects that will develop this country. Mm. And so prosecuting the woman would not have solved our problems. It wouldn't have made anybody happy, and so on. So the, he, he was the one who drew a linkage between the discontinuance of the criminal trial of Asha Huan and the Sino Hydro deal. Honorable, that is not Honorable Maki, prosecuting uh, Honorable Roxy Bukhari is, wouldn't be out of tune. You're not against that. Right. Whilst we wait for Johnny to come in and make some comments. Right. Since uh, Sami wants us to have a constructive debate, I'm not an expert on foreign affairs mm. and issues of bilateral relations between countries. But at least, can he answer this question? if he cares to, what triggered the decision by the Mahama government in accepting those uh, ex Guantanamo detainees mm -hmm. into this country? Okay, the acceptance of those ex Gitmo detainees were not in contravention with our criminal code. They had not engaged in Galamse in Ghana. They had not shot anybody. They had not killed anybody. And so clearly that is proper bilateral you know diplomatic <laughs> arrangements mm. but here we are talking about somebody who has committed crimes according to the engineer she worked with the engineer actually granted an interview to joy fm last week and said i saw aisha wine shooting a Ghanaian citizen and actually killing the Ghanaian citizen and there are so many reports of such cases okay. you don't treat the two the same because they are not the same Okay, so they are not the same. Uh, the considerations uh, 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 no, which went into the Gitmo. Let me, let me take some comments. I'll come back. So. It was Johnny. not for Sino-Hydro. Yes, but welcome once again. Let's take some money. comments and come back. for that. Thank Did you very you much. Uh, we're going to our sub-consult. defend this. No, but the man never said that. Oh, he said that. You guys are just spinning. Don't worry. We'll play the tape before we leave. Let's, right. It says, it's good the minister resigned, but they should investigate uh, when he's found guilty, he should be punished. Os uh, Osma, uh, Osama Salia from S uh, Savannah region. Mugis Mohammed in Tamale says, Good morning, Bright. Ghana is interested. The minister resigned and we can't see the resignation letter, only to see the president's acceptance letter. Wow. Hmm. The MPP government is just in to loot. They have neglected the ordinary Ghanaian. Bright, kindly come to Takwa and see how bad our roads are. Meanwhile, Takwa is a very stronghold of the ruling government. Kudos to Sami Jemfi, Danny in Takwa, a Sinai. And uh, A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, Good morning. Ghana is now under serious economic crisis. Bread makers are on strike in the northern region due to high increment in white flour. Bonti Benjamin Achime Buakwa says, When Jifa Aku Ativo resigned under the incompetent one due to the 3.6 uh, million bus rebranding chop chop, the NDC didn't attribute it to tribalism. And if they care to know, Honorable Roxin Bukhari is not the first person to step aside under the able Akufuado's government. The Honorable William Ejepon Kwetu, MP for Akimoda and former Deputy Minister of Agri, did the same about a year and a half ago. But they have failed to put on their tribal spec. They have put on their tribal spectacle. Enough of NDC's kindergarten politics. Hashtag say no to tribal politics. And it says, till now, renowned media houses have not spoken about the stipends accrued to NAPCO trainees. For your information, they have not been paid uh, for the months of March and April, which is momentarily ending today. Such disaster. Famous Fletcher in Bato and suspected tardy girls uh, kidnapper jail 36 months for cell break. Just 36 months for a criminal like this? I think the sentence is too light. What kind of country do we have uh, ourselves in? Meanwhile, someone who stole something less than 5K was sent 
sentenced to seven years imprisonment from Abladi Efiekumazongo in Takradi. And good morning, Bright. Please ask Mr. Afinjomaki if he could have played the role uh, he played in the UEW matters if he was an NDC. Could an NDC MP have done the same in an MPP regime? Uh, he is asking uh, that particular question there. And, uh, well, it says, uh, in fact, the MPP government is putting more tears in the eyes of Ghanaians. It's a great lesson for us in 2020. Uh, please bring back the Takwadi girls now. Agbe, uh, Agbe in Peje. And when will Sami Jeffy stop lying? I'm sure no objective-minded person will listen to him after 2019 if he continues to lie at this alarming rate. Good morning to you, Honorable Afenyo Maki. John Imbato. Good morning, Bright. Is Honorable Maki saying, commenting on Aisha, one issue is petty. God save Ghana. Francis Brigade in Kaswa, Senior Bright. I thank you very much indeed. Okay, grateful. Obviously, let Francis uh, uh, from Brigade is not from yes. All I wanted to say, no, I think you, okay, you, you, you yeah. let him then you, you wrap up. Uh, Honorable Afenyo Maki. You see, I, I, I simply asked them. Sami about the Gitmo 2 issue to make a point. And it's asking if you are comparing the two. Ah, we, we are talking about a bilateral relationship. Mm. The justification by the Mahama government that was that look, we have a relationship with the United States, and under such a relationship, we can consider this mm. in spite of all the those people had been tried and acquitted. Uh, Oh, I, I they have not I, been convicted I, of any crime. I, I, okay, so you, you all right, him, I, I agree with you. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you for yes. thank you for refreshing mm -hmm. my memory. Mm -hmm. So they had been tried and acquitted, mm -hmm. according to you. No, by, by the law. Facts, yes. I mean, we've well, well, no, no, no. I'm co I'm relying on your fact. Okay. Yeah. I I mean to say you I don't, don't have don't the facts. Okay, please. So I'm relying on your fact that they've been tried and acquitted. So if that is the case, per what you are saying, why not the American government releasing them to their own? states, their countries of origin, mm -hmm. where they come from. Mm -hmm. Why bring them to Ghana? Why should Ghana accept them? Mm -hmm. Why? You are saying that somebody in government is telling Ghanaians that, look, for bilateral reasons, we decided to exercise the discretion of deporting this lady mm -hmm. instead of doing a prosecution here. Let's deport. Do you think it is right? I'm saying that if some, it's an exercise of discretion. And, and you think it is I'm right? I'm saying that it's an exercise of discretion. Governor, don't ask me, nice don't ask me, okay. don't ask me whether you, you or not you, it is you, right. You, you don't I am saying that, that. An, an, an officer in government in that situation, mm. evaluating all issues, mm. relationship all issues, please, has exercised a discretion. Let's deport. Just as in your time. You exercise a discretion to accept I those ask, gitmo. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you and you are saying that you are saying that you are saying you are saying that you are saying that, yes. are saying that, that, that because because somebody was having money and was going to give money, it was in exchange. Oh, so was that what was said? Because of he never said that. That is where that is okay. your spin. Uh, I, I want, want you to, to stop. Brian, he never said I'm that. Make this concluding uh, remark. Okay. Osafu uh, never yeah. said that. Okay, he didn't okay. And right, don't, 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 don't aid him. I'm not aid him. him. I okay. think that you see, uh, this is the kind of thing that they will do. Pay, play the tape. Who played? I've challenged you. When would you play? You are you are here right now. Because we are having a discussion here, so your viewers will not in. Harriet, Sir Director Harriet, quickly play the tape. Play the tape now. To end this matter. Hold on. Let, let, enough let, of uh, this. Uh, Harriet, oh. show the record. Yes. Please play the tape and then we'll Enough of this. This play this the play the tape. Enough of it. With China. They are the main company that is helping develop the infrastructure system in Ghana. It's a Sanlo ID. It's a Chinese company. It's the one that's going to help process our website and provide about $2 billion to us. I wonder these kind of arrangements. There are other things behind the scenes. Putting that lady in jail in Ghana is not going to solve your economic problem. It's not going to make you happy or me happy. That's important. The most important thing that has been deported out of Ghana. It's not. So we must. I'm saying that 
there are many other things beyond what you see in this matter. <laughs> and everybody is wide awake. The most important thing is that it's not an we answer. have found this and have established your place and we are protecting our family. And we have a far more important and one time this woman who are more important to the family. Okay, all right. Um, so that's uh, the tip. Uh, uh, right. Sabi conclude. We are I getting out of the goal has called an own goal oh. by calling for that's what you think. Mm. I, I advise him that what he was engaging. You don't need to advise me. Poor attempt no. at nationalization. Did the man say so? They are senior Enough members of some of, of these things. People who are, 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 if you like, known defenders of the Akufuado government, like Malik Kwekubakon Jr., who have come out to say that this matter is bad, is indefensible. It, it cannot ah, be just. So today you want to listen. Let's today, go. Kukubaku's view. On. We just listen to the Kukubaku's view is acceptable. The man was asked a simple question: you know, Why did you enter Noli Prosequi relative to the criminal trial of Aisha Unwai? Mm. He says, "Oh, you know that we have a good relationship with China. Sino Hydro is even a Chinese company, and they are the ones giving us all these rules. And with these transactions, there are other things." Behind the scenes, Mr. Fenyo Market, what, what are those other things? No, no, you should say so. You what are, are those you, other you things you he was to, alluding to? You, you so the point, is, the point is that it is clear, very so, clear. So say it. It is only Mr. Fenyo Market who can see that. Professor Kwesi Prempe and all these people have seen it. So say it. So, uh, uh, Sam, lawyer okay. Samu Kujeto, uh, uh, lawyer Samu Kujeto, your senior at the bar, ah, senior so member of it. your tradition. They've all seen that. You are the only say person it. justifying this matter. Okay. And so the point I want to make here is clear. You traded our laws, our resources, our environment, water bodies, and the future of the next generation for a so-called butter deal. And that is something Ghanaians will correct, punish you, you for. That. Okay. Come 7 December 2020. Okay, I'm and, and finally, uh, Brian, let me make the point that it is How many prosecutions did you engage clear in when you were in much office on the much-touted fight issues. against corruption at Galamse by President Ekufuado has failed. CTFM has declared the fight against Galamse lost. Joy FM has done the same thing. All the journalists who follow the fight are now reporting to us that the water bodies which used to look yellowish in color are today looking brownish. And that is because of the increased speed okay. of Galamsey. We have to wrap up the Especially by Chinese and foreign He's a national communications officer of the NDC, Sami Jeffries is name, and a member of parliament for a photo constituency, Alexander. I think you're marking. Gentlemen, I'm grateful for your morning with us. I uh, wish you a happy Workers' Day tomorrow Thanks morning. Thanks for having me. And hope to see you some other time. Oh, Good morning once again. Show. Stay here. There is more coming up on the show. Yeah. Good morning once again. Have an exclusive conversation with the founder and leader of the All People's Congress. You know him as Hassan Ayariga. Some of you have called him. Ayarikov in time past. Chief, good morning. How are you doing, sir? Good morning. Good to you. see you one more time. Thank you. Firm Thank handshake you. it is. Great. You're Great. keeping great, aren't you? Yes, doing very well. Thank I you. See. How are you too? I'm very fine. You've uh, largely been silent. Why? I don't think so. Probably, probably haven't been following mm. our press conferences mm. and our interaction with the media and keeping government on tour. Mm. The last press conference we had was two weeks ago, which we actually outlined the reason for the fall of the city, mm. the challenges that confront our nation, right. the suffering and hardship in Ghana, the sale of government properties and factories, mm. and many other things. Corruption scandal mm. in the, and the difficulty of the Ghanaian people in recent time, the issue of doing so, mm. coming back again, the issue of... Uh, government says doing so is not back. Yeah, that is what government wants us to believe. Okay. Not but, but that is not it? The, but that is not it. People get up, whole day, they don't have lights. Mm. In certain areas, it even went off for three days. And most of their food stuff in fridges and mm -hmm. cool environment got spoiled. So when government is saying Jumso is not bad, maybe it's not in their homes, mm -hmm. but the individual Ghanaians know that Jumso is bad. Is the government being untruthful? I think government upon government has always been untruthful to Ghanaians. Government upon government have always lied their way through. Mm -hmm. And when they get power, they continue to deceive people, believing that when it's time for politics, they'll come back and clean the mess. Mm. 
And we have been saying that it is high time the people hold government responsible. It is high time technocrats and citizens of this country mm -hmm. judge people per their promises and per their activities and whatever they have ruled out mm -hmm. and whatever they have achieved. You don't just give government power because another political party is supposed to win every eight years and another one is supposed to win another eight years. So every eight years you change power. That is not what we are looking for. We've, we've gone past the state where NDC and MPP are playing Ghana like a football team. The, the, the minority parties, as they like to call you, have not been able to amass the kind of votes to be able to break the duopoly uh, of the NDC and MPP. I mean, since 1992, what will change this time around? I think that it's not about the minority parties not being able to amass the vote. It's about the, the, the media. Show it's that. about the media not giving the other political parties the opportunity to sell themselves. The, the electoral records That's show that. I, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming to that. What I'm saying is that when you, the media, do not give us the opportunity to sell mm -hmm. our policies, and then you have programs every day, mm -hmm. and you have only NDC and MPP represented. Mm -hmm. When Ghanaians in the North Shell are tired of these two political parties mm -hmm. and are looking for a third option, people with different mindset, people with different views mm -hmm. to tell them what is happening. But the media, and most of these, don't forget, the media is the fourth arm of government. Right. And when you don't give us the opportunity, mm -hmm. how do we sell or propagate our policies? That's the problem we Maybe find. your policies are not attractive enough. We have as, the best. Have you thought about that? Well? We have the best policy in the, in, in the, in the history of Ghana so far. Mm. If, if the NDC and the NPP policies are good, how come we are where we are? Mm. This time around, we need a drastic change. A change not from NDC to NPP or NPP back to NDC. Mm. The Indians might make one serious change in their lifetime that will abandon these two political parties and go for a third option. I, I saw your party's manifesto in 2016. It looked pretty much like that of the NPP. You shared similar ideas. So it, it's not a departure from what we have known, really, if your 2016 manifesto is anything to go by. It's not about just the manifesto. People have manifesto and then don't follow the manifestos. They, they the manifesto is your Bible. Yes, it's our Bible. But I'm saying that you said it looks pretty like the MPP. Right. Yes. But is the MPP actually fulfilling their manifesto promises mm. or they're just fooling Ghanaians? What would be your fair assessment of the government, Akufuado Baumia's led government? What would be your fair, honest assessment I think, as a presidential material itself? I think so far they have, they have, they have failed Ghanaians. Really? Nanado, as a presidential candidate in 2016, mm -hmm. campaigned better than as a president in 2017. Really? Yes. Nanado has a presidential can mm -hmm. candidate in 2016 campaigned better to win power than a president working for Ghana. Why do you say that? Because he's failed. Ghanaians had so much hope mm -hmm. in this current administration. Ghanaians believed in the integrity of Nanado. They looked at his qualities mm -hmm. around him, the qualities around him his age, mm. his exposure, his level of experience, mm. and believe that this was a man coming to salvage Ghana mm. and gave so much hope in the MPP and they voted against the NDC. Mm. But what are we seeing? Corruption, mm. vandalizing of pro government properties, abuse of government appointees and power, mm. kidnappings and killing, assaults on political party members. Mm. And the worst of it today is that we have found ourselves in the history of the culture of silence. Would you rather give him, uh, let him die before you bury him, as, as in let him finish his tenure of office before you run a, a full assessment like that and say he has failed? I think two and a half years is enough for a child to walk and mm. talk. So if you cannot assess Nanado in two and a half years, then you can equally not assess him in four years because he's gone more, he spent more time in government mm. than the rest of the time left for him. If you had a chance to meet the president today, yeah. what would be the single advice you will give him? 
I will tell him to wake up. And do because what? in 2016, I put up a small old video. Mm. And I told Ghanaian that Nanado, even if he becomes the president, will not one, be the one managing our economy. Mm. There will be certain people managing. You so they should tell us, Ghanaians, who is going to be on the front line managing this country. Right. Today, that's what is happening. Nanado himself as president mm. doesn't even know what is happening in this country. Really? I'm telling you. How do you know this? Because nothing is moving. The Nanado we all, let me say, thought of and think was, and people thought this is a man who was coming to celebrate this country. Mm. It's a man who is now sleeping. The macroeconomic indicators, indicators are, are working. Uh, free SHS, they will talk about one district, one factory, drone delivery service, and, and all the others. They, they, they say they are working. Let me take you to just small assessment of Nanado. Mm. Nanado, when he came to power, decided to reduce taxes on goods and services, mm. abolish import taxes and other taxes. What, it did, what, what was the effect on our economy? Did the prices of goods and services go down? Mm. No. Did we see reduction in the prices of commodities in the market? No. Mm. So what it means is that the reduction in taxes did not translate into reduction in goods and services mm. for the consumer. So basically, the consumer is still paying more than ever. Mm. So what's the essence of reducing taxes when you cannot benefit? When the consumer doesn't benefit. Mm. That is number one. Number two, when Nanado came, he promised one district, one factory. Right. Good. Fair enough. I, I hoped he, had, he did something. But you see, we have several factories in this country have been abandoned by the NPC and MPP. And then you talk about one district, one factory. When you cannot actually renovate mm. or let me put the weight revive those old factories into good use mm. now you're thinking of building new ones look we import over 1.2 million dollar billion dollars of rice every year mm. for local consumption right we have a rice factory in alvayim mm. and we have a rice factory in Palu. we have abandoned those factory to what we import over three hundred thousand dollars million dollars of tomato paste mm -hmm. and ketchup. Mm -hmm. We have the Palgu tomatoes factory right. rotting there mm -hmm. and other Wenchi tomatoes factory rotting. We, baby pampers, mm -hmm. we spent $700 million on the importation of baby diapers. Mm -hmm. We have cotton factories in the northern part of Ghana. What do we do? Fish. Mm -hmm. Not less than $700 million do we use, spend in the importation of fish. But we have to see right in front of us mm -hmm. the lakes and the rivers. What do we do? We still import. Are we in a hopeless situation? Worse than hopeless. I don't even know. How would better. you describe it? I think we don't have a vision. We are not focused. We are not serious. I think we have taken Ghana for a ride. Mm -hmm. And Ghanaians themselves don't even realize that. And we need to sit up and understand that this country mm -hmm. is deteriorating, ret retrogressing. In the 21st century. You don't sound happy. I am not happy. I, can, I don't even sleep. Because I cannot imagine that we have all these intellectuals, mm. we have all these fine brains, good politicians in the system, yet we are where we are. If Nkrumah should come back today, mm. he will regret ever being a Ghanaian. Let me take you again to the issue of the Nandro government. Mm. I just want to give you a very simple explanation okay, and finally, an example right. for you to understand. Your father passed on and leaves property for you and your, your children, mm -hmm. your brothers and mm -hmm. siblings to manage. Then the one who is supposed to be managing you starts selling the houses one after the other. Mm -hmm. The properties that your father left, the factories, the companies and the building. And then that person tells you he's a good manager. Do you believe such a person is a good manager? This is what we are, we are seeing in this country. The MPP government is selling all pro government properties mm -hmm. and calling it privatization. Uh, ECG is now called PDS. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that has Kenyans, if we, if we do not even share the national cake equally, mm -hmm. this is sectors that we can actually reduce the cost of it to benefit the ordinary Ghanaian to be able to live in very comfortable. Hmm. We've sold those ones out. Mr. Ayaga, let's go back to some of the issues that you talked about.
talked about corruption thriving under this government. Uh, Honorable Martin Alamisi Benz Kaiser Amidu was uh, duly inducted as a um, uh, uh, special prosecutor. You think that that is enough to fight corruption? And, and by the way, I spoke with the chief imam, the national chief imam, uh, last Thursday, and he says that it takes willing people to end corruption. That it's possible to end corruption. You see, I will take you back to the earlier discussions where you said that we had similar manifestos. manifestos right. In our manifesto, we spoke about an independent special prosecutor. Okay. MPP incorporating the manifesto of APC mm. ignored the independent and decided to put special prosecutor. They say you copied them. That's what I'm now. When I explain and finish, okay. you know who copied who. Okay. So they ignored that word independent and rather put special prosecutor. Okay. You cannot tie my hands and ask me to slap you. When you bring special prosecutor's office on board, mm -hmm. he needs to be independent, to be able to act devoid of political power, uh, party in interference, mm -hmm. devoid of any kind of interference, mm -hmm. so that he's independent and autonomous. He can manage and pursue all cases mm -hmm. without recourse to anybody. Today, the NDPP, in their confused mm -hmm. manner, decided to put Martin Hamidou has a special prosecutor under the office of the Attorney General. So Martin Hamidou, as a special prosecutor, cannot operate on his own mm. and cannot fight any corruption until the file is given to him from the office of the Attorney General. Is there speak people can petition him? You can petition, but if you petition and your boss decides that you're not going to handle the case, what are you going to do? That's why I say you tie my hands and you ask me to slap you. I'm sure you had so, a conversation about Aisha Juan as well, and the Sino Hydro and the matters arising from a senior minister's speech. What are your thoughts about it? West in the history of the world, not Ghana. We prosecute Ghanaians. Do you know how many Ghanaians are locked up in prison in the past seven to 13 months? Mm -hmm. Ghanaians who are locked up, do you know? Go to the prisons. Mm. And you'd be shocked the number of Ghanaians that are locked up because of Galamse. Mm. This is our country. And the heart of the nation is our mining sector. And we are so ignorant. Mm. That's why I get emotional. We're so ignorant that you give the heart of your nation to foreigners to mine. Are we really thinking as a people that we have given our... Where in this world mm. that the Americans will give their heart to the African people to work. Even as an African, you go to American, you know your position. Right. Go to Europe and see whether they will give you their mining sector, whatever kind of industry is it or whatever sector it is, for you to work there. Not even to mine, to work as a worker. You don't get that position because you are not even qualified to be there. But we are so ignorant. I hear Sofa Marvel saying that we are deporting her back because of we're bilateral some, some bilateral. Are you serious? You, you, you're imprisoning your people, shoot and kill. That is the word they are using against ordinary citizens, the youth of our country that are supposed to be the future generation, the people that we're supposed to take care of. Mm. We're not taking care of them. Now we're killing them. And we are seeing diplomatic call. Are you, who thinks like that? Ms. Ayaga, let's move to IPAC. I'm sure you've heard also the uh, face of the General Secretary of the NDC with the boss of the EC. Uh, issues arising from the IPAC meeting. I'm sure you've been following and attending yeah. some in your own right. Yeah. W what are your thoughts? Are we heading towards a ditch? Are we going the right path? Are we retrogressing like you said in the past? What are I you think we're going, we? we're going towards disaster. Why do you say if so? If we don't take time, it will cause civil war. The way the EC chair, even mm. though I personally was happy mm. when she was appointed okay. and I thought some reforms will be implemented mm. to make it a more understandable and competitive place. Okay. You see, IPAC only exists because of political parties. Mm. The EC exists because of political parties. Right. So the EC should know without political parties, they don't exist. Mm. So in dealing with them, you should learn to understand their language mm. and spell out things for, the, 
for all of you to understand because it is a give and take thing right. that people need to deliberate. Mm. That is where we deliberate and come out with reforms, agreed reforms, resolutions. Mm. But when we go there and we are fighting each other like mouse and cat, then we have failed our economy. We are, mm. we go, we are heading towards disaster. Mm. If the EC has a problem with the political parties, it is her duty to sit with them and resolve these issues of you, you don't see that happening? I don't see that. I see some level of arrogance mm. in it. I see some level of people are going to abuse power and say, look, whether you like it or not, I'm going to do A. Okay. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to do B. We are not living in a kangaroo republic. And that's dangerous. And that is very dangerous. Final question look, to you. Look, the ECC says mm. that all political parties must have offices okay. across the country. The country. Right. But the, EP, the, the EC itself cannot have offices mm. and cannot, cannot conduct elections mm. at the police stations and the constituencies, but want to conduct elections and at the district, district level. Offices. So if you, and when they confronted them, they said they don't have money. But you want us as political parties to be able to have fully offices in all the constituencies, right. but you don't have money just to conduct elections. At that period. You mean and to I, say the EC is not complete in the processes yes, that they want to? Yes, they want us to do that. And then you come out and say that you cannot carry the machines to the constituencies and the police stations. Oh my God, are you serious? How are you going to conduct election then? Are you going to carry the madam herself there? Because you need to conduct elections at the police stations 2020. The two political parties are currently in a meeting with the National Peace Council. Yesterday they had a second meeting to want to end vigilantism in this country. One, is it your honest opinion that vigilantism would ever end in this country? And two, do you think that we're doing anything right with that meeting? I don't think we're doing anything right with that meeting. You see, that's why I say we have lost control of what is leadership about, what leadership is all about. Mm. You have an issue at hand that has to do with crime. Okay. And you avoid that aspect of the crime. And you go and sit with thieves. And you ask the thieves how we're going to manage how to stop stealing. You're a thief. Mm. And that's what you live on. And you want to stop stealing. And you call each other and say, let's talk about how we stop stealing. Who are and the thieves here? The Hendis and the MPP. They, they are have the vigilante groups. Okay. And they want to sit down and discuss about how they want to stop it. They know how to stop. Who would you rather have in a meeting? I think that as government, the important factor in vigilantism is the crime aspect of it. Okay. That is the important factor. Do we need a new law? We don't need a law. We need to exercise the laws that we have. That crime should be treated as crime, no matter who commits that crime. It has no exception. Will vigilantism ever end in Ghana? Vigilantism will only end when we begin to deal with crime as crime. But when we say we're going to change mm. the word vigilante and put clauses to stop them from operating, mm. good. You say there is no vigilantes. And then the same people acting the same way mm. now call themselves political foot soldiers, mm. committing the same crime and atrocity. What are you going to do? Hmm. <laughs> Zaza Yarga, have you picked your running mate yet? We are yet to finish the police. Do you have any names in mind? Oh, very soon it will come up. You, you don't want to spill the beans? Not now. We're Not still now. doing what is important, reorganization. Must we still vote for you in 2020? I think that is the best option now. We don't right. have another option. The best option is the APC, mm -hmm. the party that believes in quality leadership, the party that believes in empowering the youth of this country, because all these old men have abandoned the youth of this country. And they are wandering all the streets of Accra, don't know, not knowing what to do. Should we believe you? Believe me, I'm the last option. Okay, that's Mr. Hassan Ayariga. He's the founder and leader of the All People's Congress. He says, believe him, and uh, we're retrogressing as opposed to progressing. We'll take a break and when we return, there's more here on TV3 News. Stay with us when we'll be right back. Welcome back. And some inmates of the Gambaga Alleged Witches Camp continue to administer medications even after they have completed an entire dosage prescribed by doctors. This is because they are in, unable to service uh, hospital bills. Zubeda Ismail reports from the northern region. Basic health care is the right of every Ghanaian citizen. Thus, human right is duly enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. It means 
irrespective of gender, physical stature, mental stability, and age, quality health care must be provided to you when the need arises. However, inmates at the Gambaga alleged witches camp, mostly the aged, have a difficulty accessing health care. Inmates at the camp who have been alleged to be witches with many banished from their communities feel safe here. Daily basis, we go to the hospital. Sometimes I can go six, five times. Oh. Yeah. Anybody who is sick here, they spread fast because of their numbers. Mm -hmm. Something like cholera. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. It is something that can easily spread. Ghana, in 2003, through an act of parliament, introduced the National Health Insurance Scheme. The amended Act 852 was subsequently implemented in 2004 to provide financial access to quality health care. We have registered them with the NHS. They are all cut bearers. Anybody who says a cut bearer, we don't joke about it. But the fact is even that sometimes the Senate carrying the NHS and the only thing they will do is to write, go and buy drugs. And, and they, the money? they come back here. Ideally, inmates should not have difficulty accessing health care services. But that is not the case. The situation gets tougher when their cards expire. Our difficulty now is even not sending them there. The difficulty is they will write a note, go and buy drugs. Where is the money? That is what is killing us now. Pakrugu Bukhari, a native of Mamprugu, narrates her ordeal after she reported to the hospital with some pain in her eyes about a month ago. Her prescription had three medicines, but she received two out of the three. The third medicine, an eye drop, was not supplied. According to her, though she had the health insurance, she's a registered member of the National Health Insurance. She was only given this. And with the eye drop, they told her that um, there were 25 Ghana cities and she had to pay. At that instant, she didn't have money and so she didn't buy it. She came back home, raised money through this business. If symptoms persist for three days, consult your doctor. A popular caution by doctors means nothing to Pwakrugu. Though she has been vilified a number of times while seeking medical care, that did not deter her. Her refusal to visit the hospital for a review is not because of the vilification. She intimates she is unable to go for review before she goes to see the doctor at the consulting room. She's also demanded to pay 25 cities, where she does not have the money. And that is the reason why she's not been able to go back. And she's opted to keep taking these two medicines and keep putting this into the eye, though she doesn't seem to see any improvement. Her sight is steadily failing, but she says her intuitiveness is enough. I just inquired from her how she's able to identify between the diclofenac and the paracetamol. It's interesting she's still able to do that just by feeling them. So the sizes are what she's, she uses to identify these medicines. Once she fills those and she sees that they are the smaller ones, she knows these, this is uh, diclofenac and then she knows this is paracetamol. Pakurugu Bukhari and the inmates meet doctors only when civil society organizations visit with doctors. 2014, we got one and then, uh, yeah. We got another one recently, but that was last year. It's not often and often, apart from these two I can remember, we don't. But normally it will come when someone wants to support us to do, mm -hmm. yeah. The caretaker, Samson Lar, recounts some moments between inmates and health workers during hospital visits. We send them to the hospital and sometimes they just look at them and they think like, immediately they get to know that she's a witch. I can remember one of them I had to speak to the doctor because what came out of his mouth, I was very disappointed. What came out of the doctor's mouth? He was treating her and I don't know whether someone prompted the person that that was the women I was taking care of. And he said, oh, 
they kill people and they also fear death. And he said it in the language that the woman could even understand. So I was like, what is going on? Someone is sick. They have just accused the patient. The patient is not well. How do you say this? That's uh -huh. from a doctor, a learned yes. person. Yes, a learned Oh, I can tell you that those who call themselves learned persons are even those who fear them more. Inmates are not vilified only when they visit the hospital by themselves, as residents are unable to identify them. But their ages do not allow them to walk from the camp to the hospital. I think the youngest person here is around 60 years. The youngest? The youngest. If not 60, 55, yeah, something okay. like that. Many of them are old. Many, many of them are old. About, I tell you, 90%. Most inmates have health conditions, including mental disorders. Routine checks for such inmates would help improve their health. We have, there are about three who are even having this mental uh, illness. Uh, I know many of them are also this blood pressure, and hypertension, sicknesses. What we do is that, that's why I was referring to mentally hospital we attend. We have identified all of them and put them into groups. Those with high blood pressure, we kept them into. So we send them mentally to pick their drugs. We leave the drugs with them. For instance, the mental uh, people, we have given the drugs to Mangazia. Okay. Every morning, whether you like it or not, you must go and greet the Mangazia. That is our tradition here, okay. as soon as you are here. So what we do is that every morning when they go there to greet her, she gives it to them. Samson says the situation would have been less challenging if inmates were beneficiaries of the Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program, which would have absorbed the renewal fees. Another good thing we were thinking was the proper policies like the LIP program. Mm -hmm. We were thinking that all of them should have been registered. How many of them are registered? Oh, there are just only about 29 or 30 people who are registered. Out, and of, out of the 78. The East Mampusi Municipal Chief Executive, Abdul Nasser Danladi, has meanwhile assured registration process of inmates will commence soon. I was thinking that the first quarter they will allow us to continue, but I don't know if it will be the problem. So now that you, you inform me, I will let the social welfare officer take care of that. Until then, caretakers have to use their meager salary to pay hospital bills of inmates. Zubaida Ismail, TV3 News, Gambaga. Zubaida, so I'd like to say happy birthday to Estelle Day at the uh, Harvest Christian Ministry in Pando. This is from Mr. Soa here at TV3. Now, Tilapia wraps us off with a uh, fight against corruption, August Toothless Bulldog. The picture is uh, there to speak for itself. It says it doesn't bite. He's only to appear to be fighting us. That's the corrupt officials carrying money bags and special Kwesi Pita there sitting right in front of a man sitting uh, on the throne there. But that's how we wrap up the show until tomorrow when we see you. Tomorrow is Workers' Day. It's going to be a holiday. Be fan. Know that if you can think it and your heart can believe it, only you can achieve it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>